asked for a link. Linking. Hello, everybody. Again, sorry we have had a couple of technical glitches since I last saw you. Otherwise, I well, I rather hope you would have seen me before now. Now, uh, anyway, my hat is still in place. Yes, and we are now looking at the lions, which are over there. Who these lions are? Probably the Angama pride, I'm told reliably by David, uh, who is, of course, on camera. David, how sure are you that this is the Angama pride? About 80% sure. sure. Good. Well, that's probably about as sure as you'll get out here, because nobody seems to know exactly what's going on with the lions. And, of course, that's where you are going to come in, helping us sort out exactly what is happening with what lions and where they live, who makes them up. And perhaps, and I suspect this quite strongly, we are going to come across a sort of situation where we might in some ways redefine lion sociality as the migration comes. We're here at the perfect time before the Great Migration arrives, and I think perhaps that that has given us an opportunity to see these prides at their most stable. And then when the great herds come through here, or digital cup, I think what you will find is that the dynamics will change. How they're going to change and in what way, well, that remains to be seen. Then there's another little one, Darby. You can just see its head stuck out the edge of the grass there. If you go just a little bit to the right of where you are now. There it is. It's just put it down now, of course, naturally. Just in there. And the whole pride seems to be scattered along this sort of ravine or erosion donga, as we call them. I quite like the word donga, don't you, David? It's a lugger, here, is it? Oh, dear, so we can't call it a donga, you mean. Uh, so, the entire pride seems to be uh, sort of draped along the sides of this deep lugger or ravine. I'm going to sneak slightly forward. My Swahili ain't so fly at the moment, and I just got berated by one of the guides from this area who came past here and spoke to me in Kiswahili and I stared at him as though he had stepped from a piece of Swiss cheese, at which point he got very upset and asked me how on earth I could be here and not speak Kiswahili. When I told him I'd arrived yesterday, he didn't seem to be in the slightest bit mollified, which was most disappointing. So he then taught me two words, which I promptly forgot. Um, because my pen didn't work, believe it or not, but I'm going to write them all down and hopefully by the end of this I will have some smattering of Swahili. There they are, doing, of course, as we know, what lions do very best in the world, nothing. Now we have about ooh, 30 minutes left before we have to skedaddle back up the hill and we are going to be doing some night tests. So we've got a little bit more time out here. I'm going to do a little bit more exploring rather than sit with these flat cats. And while we head off to see what else we can find, Baron uh, is still possibly at Chitwa Dam. I'm not sure where. Please would you ask him if he's broken down? He seems to be in there most of the afternoon. Uh, he's got now something else there.